Hi everyone and welcome back to this uh, series of uh, solving problems of the electrical A1 circuit uh, exam for the PEO uh, professional engineering exam in uh, in Canada. Um, we started with the first topic in the uh, course in the circuit course which is circuit reduction and we finished the first question and this is a question number number 2. This question appear, appeared in May 2019 exam. So again, here in this question, you have a circuit. You want to find the resistance between points A and B, and then you will find, uh, you're asked to find the currents here in I1 and I2. Now, this circuit has a special arrangement. We call it the Wheatstone Bridge. So this is what we call the Wheatstone Bridge. I will come to it uh, at the end of the question when I go to part number, uh, number C. So let's try to solve this question. We said that the first thing that we, in the circuit reduction, you have to identify the nodes to see if there are any resistors in series or in parallel. So you come here, this is node number one, this is number two. Now this is also two and this is two. All of these are the same node because there is no element between these nodes. So it's the same point basically. This is number three, this is number four, this is number five. And when you look carefully here, you will notice that there is no two resistors connected in series here uh, because for our two resistors, as uh, we define it in the previous video to be in series, you will have to have two resistors sharing one node and nothing else share that specific node. So for example, the nine ohm here and the five ohm share this node but also the three ohm sharing with them the same node, so it cannot be in series. And if you go and analyze the whole circuit, you will not find two single resistors that are connected in series. Also, there is no two resistors connected in parallel. We say that we identify the parallel connection that if the two resistors sharing the same two nodes, and you will not find any resistor that's sharing the same two nodes, and by Looking to the numbering system, you can easily identify this. Okay, so we the only thing we have here is to go for the delta y converter. And in this circuit, we have three deltas. So this is one delta here, another delta here, and the third delta there. I said before that you need only to convert one delta, and usually the, the circuit becomes easy to be analyzed. So I pick this delta. So we will have here the delta equivalence. So this will be your R1, R2, and R3. We say that the resistance of the Y converted circuit is equal to the two multiplication of the two adjacent resistors divided by the summation of the three resistors. So for example, here your R1, is equal to the multiplication of the two adjacent resistors to R1, which is the three and the nine ohm. So this is the three times nine, divided by the summation of the three resistors, which is the three plus nine plus the nine, and this will give me 1.28 ohm. Now, if you look to uh, your R3 as well, it is between the three and nine as well, divided by the summation of the three resistors. So this is also, equal to R3. For R2, R2 basically is equal to the multiplication of the two adjacent resistors, which is the 9 ohm and the 9 ohm, which is equal to 9 times 9, divided by the summation of the three resistors, and this will give me 3.85 ohm. Now, once we found the equivalent, these resistors we just take them out. And once you take them out, the circuit becomes much easier to analyze. And let's see here. So here at node one, so we will have the 15 ohm between one and two. Now you will have R2 here connected between two and another node, let me call it six. So this is your R2 which is equal to the 3.85 ohm between two and six node. Now at the six node, we have two branches coming out of it. So between six 
and three, we will have another resistance, which is R1, which is the one 0.28 ohm. And so between six and three node. And the same thing here, we have R3 between six and four. So here we have also 1.28 ohm between six and four. Then between three and five, we have another resistance between three and five which is the five ohm. And then we will have another five ohm between four and five. Five ohm, okay. And between two and five, we have the 10 ohm. 10 ohm. And this is my circuit. And now when you lock here, you will notice that the circuit become much, much easier. So, the 1.28 and the 5 are in series because we are sharing node number 3 and nothing else sharing this node. The 1.28 and the 5 also in series. So we have these two resistors in series. So basically you add them. So let me here redraw the circuit here. 15 ohm. 3.85. Six point two eight two nine, something like that. Okay, and this is three point eighty five, three point eighty six. Okay, so there is basically some approximation happened here, and here we will have the ten ohm resistance. Now, clearly, you will have these two are in parallel, in series with this. With the 6.28 with the 6.28 they are in parallel and the combining so let me go for a clean uh, sheet here so you will have basically the 15 ohm you will have the 3.85 and then you will have six sorry 3.15 around 3.15 with this some approximation so these two are in parallel you multiply them divide by their summations so you'll get around uh, the 3.15. And then here we have the 10 ohm. Then from this, this two, you add them in series. So this is 7 ohm. So basically, you will have 15 ohm, 7 ohm, and 10 ohm. Okay. These two are in parallel, so I will call it uh, R dash. So your R dash is equal to seven times 10 divided by seven plus 10, and this will give me around 4.12 ohms. So I will have here the 15 ohm and the 4.12 ohm, okay? So the total R equivalent, these two are in series. So this is equal to 19.12 ohm. So this is the final value between point A and B. So as you can see here, once I do the delta Y connection, it becomes very easy to collect uh, the, uh, those resistors. As I mentioned before, I, I did a scan over the last uh, maybe 15, 16 exams. Always there is a, the questions of the circuit reduction. It needs the delta Y conversion. You will never get a circuit like this. It's always something like this that you need the, to do the delta Y conversion. Okay, now in part B, solve for I1. What is I1? I1 is the current that going through the 15 ohm. So here we will connect the source. Here we will connect the source. And the source is 110 volt. And this I1 is the same as this I1. And this resistance, the 4.12 ohm, is basically the equivalent resistance of the whole circuit here. So I can simply replace this whole circuit by the 4.12 ohm. And then just apply Ohm's law. So your I1, is equal to the voltage, the 110 volt, divided by the summation of the 15 ohm, 
plus the 4.12 ohm. And this is will give me uh, the total current will be equal to 5.75. And again, this is sort of approximation. So you add these two resistors in series, you divide the voltage by this resistor, you will get that specific voltage. Finally, it's asked for I2. Okay. And here comes the Wheatstone bridge. I will leave in the description some videos to describe the Wheatstone bridge and derive the formulas for that. To save time here, there is no need to uh, to do that. So the Wheatstone bridge basically. This is the conf this configuration is called the Wheatstone bridge. So the Wheatstone bridge will have four legs. We call it this is R1, R2, R3, and R4. And between them, you could have a resistance or it could be an open circuit. Okay. And we use the Wheatstone bridge in uh, many applications, and the most important one of them in instrumentations and metering. Now, this circuit has a very, very specific uh, property. Now, if I assume this is a voltage VA and this is VB, and that the derivation for what I will mention now, I will keep it in the description. So if you are interested, you can go and check that. So in the Whitson Bridge, we have two basically modes of operation. The first one, which is in this case, we call it the balanced mode of operation. The balanced mode of the Wheatstone bridge when R1 over R2 equal to R3 over R4. This is called balanced bridge or Wheatstone bridge in the name of the scientists who discovered it called Wheatstone. Okay, so now if the bridge is balanced, and this is what I'm gonna basically show it to you in the description, the proof for that, the mathematical proof. If this is the case, then your VA will equal to VB. Now, if VA is equal to VB, it means the potential difference between these two points is zero. So it means that your I2 equal to VA minus VB ohms low, divided by the three ohm, now, because these two voltages are the same, the current will be equal to zero. So without doing any circuit analysis, in the Wheatstone bridge, if you have this configuration, the Wheatstone bridge configuration, and it is a balanced, then the current will be equal to zero. As I said, I will leave you description for both the balanced and the unbalanced bridge as well, and I will show it to you the formula for, for both.